Hey up everyone, back again uh, to continue with the Indian slash Royal Enfield. And one uh, viewer mentioned the BSA A10 engine that you got a glimpse of on the bench once before, so I thought I'd, I'd put it in view. It's uh, all finished now eventually, been an absolute swine to do, a lot of case repairs and things, and uh, so many little bits that were missing. I've got, see this here? Nuts, bolts, lock washers, little things, stupid things like I was missing uh, two of the push rods. Uh, when I looked in the parts book, of course, the 500 and the 650 are in the same parts book because a lot of the stuff is, well, most of the stuff is the same. So, of course, Muggins here ordered the uh, push rods for the 500. So, when I go and fit them, I'm thinking to myself, wait a minute, what's wrong here? These seem very short. So, of course, I looked at the number on the bag and then I looked at the number in the parts book and I ordered the wrong ones. Anyway, it's been a long time coming, but uh, finally it went together. Um, so, customers coming for that. See all the chroming on it. Yeah, whatever. But anyway, I thought, I can't remember who it was. Names go in one ear and out the other. Uh, there you go. He, he had an aerial hunt master, which of course is more or less the same. So, there it is for you. Okay, we're going to carry on today. We're going to do the, uh, the forks and both wheels. Probably won't be that long a video because the fork's pretty simple. As uh, Charlie Prescott mentioned in a little email I got yesterday or today, whatever it was, they are a bit agricultural. But anyway, we'll pull them apart to see what they're like and so you can see how they come apart. And we'll, uh, we'll look at the wheels. But before we do that, I'm going to uh, bring you in close up to show you something that I mentioned in passing, completely unrelated to motorcycles, but I thought you might like to see this. I mentioned the electrical fittings they have here in the US. So I was going to show you a light switch as well, but this is a wall socket. It's like a porcelain -y thing. It goes in a little box, it screws top and bottom. The wires just screw onto there. I mean, there's a a big thing about having everything inspected and to code and all the rest of it and the light switch is just the same it's same same porcelain thing with a little flick there are some slightly more modern ones which are squarer but they're exactly the same sort of thing they're just this thing that you stick in a little box in the wall and then one thing I can never understand here is they always have the wires for the plugs coming out like that so you know you're always catching on them and uh, these two little prongs here I'm forever straightening these because they're really flimsy so there you go just thought I'd uh, show you out of interest so now let's get on to the real stuff so we'll start with the forks. Um, I pop them in the vise with some soft jaws in here. I'm gripping it at the bottom to start with because of the, the flat part where the brake torque is to give us a chance to undo the nut on the bottom. Now, sometimes these nuts are stiff and sometimes they aren't. Funny enough on the other fork which I've already worked on because it was seized and I didn't want to spend hours banging and thumping with your watching. Even that one came off quite easily as well. Now what I normally do here also is while the nut's still on loosen that like that. Next thing is to take the seal nut off the top. Can you see that? No, you can't. Now this should come out. Well 
relatively easily. For some reason I've never found one of these that sticks all that much. Not like the very not like the BSA and Triumph ones, which also cost a nice chrome. So you uh, you don't want to be mining them, so you either need the outside tool for the Triumph ones or the inside tool for the BSA ones. But what we'll do is we'll there are two little flats on here. So if you're going to do a lot of these, it might be worthwhile making yourself up or finding a huge spanner to fit. But we'll try the Stilsons, and if they come off easily... There we go. If it had been any tighter, I would have wrapped something around here to protect it a little bit. But, you know, it's nothing you're going to see. here at the top we've got a bronze bushing and now that that's off the bottom there's nothing holding it in except whatever corrosion there is and on the other one it was pretty bad I mean that is jammed on there solid and for some reason I don't really know why here when I was taking this apart that actually snapped I mean there's nothing holding this in, there's the bit that's sticking out the bottom, it just goes through, the bottom's not threaded, there you go, and that's all there is to them inside, although we'll see that in a minute. So let's see if this one will come apart. I've had these upside down to drain. All there was was water and nasty stuff in both of them actually. So what we're going to do is put this in here. And with a soft face, well hard but not metal hammer, we'll see if we can tap it off. that bit. That's because we loosened the end you see it wasn't jammed in there. So now we're going to see how well still looking for a new vice by the way. Main thing is I don't want a swivel vice but I can't find one that isn't so I'm thinking I'm gonna have to end up buying a swivel vice and either just welding it to the swivel or taking it off the swivel and drilling the base of the vise to whatever. Well, will you look at that? Ooh, and more water. So there's our bronze bushing and it's, see it's thicker at this end. So you have a bronze bush here and here it's plain steel. Let me swivel this round a bit. A few holes and in here we have the the valving. Now again this has little bits for a C-spanner type thing. You can make yourself one if you want. Or generally, once more, they're not that tight. You know, for somebody that doesn't like seeing people using adjustable spanners, I shouldn't really be using this, should I? It's not so much that it's tight as that's moving. is that and you saw me take the fork apart so you know I haven't been in here first oh, 
in your view there, aren't I? So I have no idea why that other one snapped at the bottom here. It's really strange. So that comes out. And there is our valving. As I say, very basic indeed. This part comes apart with a seat clip. Okay. I'll bring you close in and we'll take the valving off and show you that. Here's the damping rod with its valves. Um, for this end, you need the same size spanner as you use to take the nut off, off here. So that will come off. And then, oh, there we go. That will come off, just has a plain steel washer on the back, see how cruddy it is, all the water on here, so that's that, that's one end, there is a little uh, circlip in here, like a piston ring circlip. No, pissing ring. Do you know, I've noticed how often I say things and when I watch them afterwards I think that's not what I meant to say. The little circlip that holds the gudgeon pin in. Right, now at this end, this part comes, just slides off. Then this part comes off. Then here, it's exactly the same, except we've got an outside snap ring as they would say call it here so that comes off and then we have exactly the same thing just a plain steel washer covering the holes okay so nothing in here that causes any great problems just give it a clean up take it apart give it a clean up and put it back together so that's the forks, now we'll move on to the wheels. We'll start with the front wheel. And this actually won't take long because very much a wheel's a wheel's a wheel. But this one is slightly unusual because we've got a brake plate on this side, six inch, and we've got a brake plate on this side. Now, oh, that one's solid. For those of you old enough to remember the days before disc brakes, um, on some of the GP machines there were some very exotic uh, drum brakes. In fact you would get things like four leading shoe, I'm trying to remember the name, it will come to me. You would have four leading shoe brakes, see, this is a single leading shoe brake in that when you twist this you force the brake shoes apart and as this one comes apart here the wheel is pressing on it that's one leading shoe and this one is trailing so it's only a single leading shoe if you have a cam at both sides so that when your cable moves two of them push the the brake shoes out then each brake shoe has one edge that's leading against the drum as it turns so that's two brake twin leading brake shoe brake drum. If you have four cams, so you have four little brake shoes, then you can get four leading shoes. And still hasn't come to me. Fontana? Anyway, these Italian brakes, they would actually have two brake plates, so you had an eight leading shoe from brake. And of course, discs came along and it was so much easier. So this one. Oh, I mentioned a PMO blaster. 
and if you look at the comments you'll see somebody from the UK again sorry I can't remember names mentioned some stuff that you can get in the UK and it was also mentioned that you can make up you can actually buy it God, names again begins with a K Krull, Kral, something like that uh, a releasing fluid which is basically a mixture 50% acetone and 50% automatic transmission fluid and I do have a bottle of it somewhere that I made up the acetone acts as a a carrier to get the ATF into where it's going and it does work well but I just find you know stuff in a can is so much easier to squirt squirt and you're done and PB blaster is good not everyone agrees but I think it works anyway there's the nut that comes off and you'll see it's got a a chamfer to it on one side to hold this in and there we have our shoes now you'll notice on this one the entire thing comes off the, the pivot point take the nut off the pivot point will come off when we're going to clean everything up and here even our operating cam there are two bolts that hold the entire thing on so it will come right off there's what I was saying about single leading shoe and twin leading shoe. When we turn that, it pushes these out. But as the, drum, the wheel is going round, it's only going to push on that one. Because this one's trailing, that one's trailing, that one's trailing. But this one is actually pushing out into it. Okay. Fingers crossed, everybody. I don't think... Oh, look at that. <laughs> I think we're going to need some new brake shoes. And that I find intriguing. This, as we know, is a 1950s one. Perhaps the real Enfield buffs will tell me. Unless these being put on genuine Royal Enfield, it says in there. But they're bonded on linings. I'm thinking about doing some different linings for the brakes on my Charles bike. So I'm looking at that. All right. Let's see what happens here. Yes. Wheel spindle is turning. Let's find something to get a grip on that. I can. Oh, I've got something inside my glove sticking in my finger. Ow, ow, ow. Do, 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 do. Oh! You know what? I don't know whether this cup was all sort of dry type rust. But this bike's come apart moderately easy considering easily considering how uh, how it looked there we go aha uh -huh. now will you look there that actually is being welded back together. That brake shoe was broken in two at some point. And I don't see a Royal Enfield casting on either side. Curiouser and curiouser. Hope you're seeing everything. I just noticed that uh, we're a bit out here. Weld in there. Okay. There we've got a little seal. Oh, the bearings are completely, completely knackered. As I've mentioned, it's uh, it's sometime since I've worked on one of these hubs. In fact, not since I had my constellations at home, 
which is God nearly 40 years ago you know making these videos you might think is a real ego trip but I'll tell you what it does not make me think I look old and as I say I keep saying such rubbish sometimes I watch it and I think what the hell are you thinking of Michael and on one of these I kept calling it the uh, primary chain case the chain guard now this should just pop these bearings out no screws or anything holding them in there it is one spindle and bearing and I can knock the other one out at my leisure you know the uh, the drill now the next thing we're going to do with this is as you've seen me do before I'm going to make a drawing of the spoke pattern so that I know which way the spokes go as you see here the inner spoke goes to the right at least I hope you can see that yeah you must be able to I think the inner spoke goes to the right and it crosses one it only crosses two so I'll make a drawing of the pattern and then with this since we're ditching everything the rims shut I'll just cut the spokes out and then I can clean up the hub and we can go from there so let's move on to the rear wheel. Oh, this is heavy. All right, now then. So you're all in. What I want to mention here is, I think it was Peter Fletcher, was it? who asked me about the QD hub, um, how the chain and everything stayed in place when you could take the wheel out. So what we have is, you will see here, even though the wheel spindle is out, it is out isn't it, yes it is, um, we've got this threaded portion sticking out here. Now this goes in the swinging arm and big nut goes on and that holds the brake drum and the sprocket and everything in there this actually goes through the swinging arm as well this is the torque for it that goes through the plate so that all bolts in tight but that will come there it goes off the wheel so this is bolted in nice and tightly like that and on this side as you can see it's got these holes and in here actually is a rubber cush so that is bolted nice and firm into the swinging arm and it can stay there and the wheel can be pulled off because the wheel has got inside there nubs to fit into those holes so You've got your brake drum in there all fastened up then the wheel goes on and then another spindle comes through I bet you can't see that can you another spindle comes through from this side and then there's a big spacer goes on and the spacer is just big enough that when you take it off it gives you enough room to pull that off those nubs now where are we A couple of people used this system, BSA did. The difference with the BSA one is the BSA has actually got splines. Oops. So there's the big spacing piece you see and on this one that goes in there and fits in. There's, the inside of this is splined. Let's see if I can get 
you can see there the spool hub has splines on it again let me check if you can see yep just and the inside of this is splined so that'll just go into there and this side has a little stub axle sort of thing that will bolt into the swinging arm so that holds that in there you go I think I mentioned this actually when I was uh, first talking about wheels but Unfortunately, don't have a twin leading shoe brake plate to show you. A bit of BSA. Okay, now this has uh, certainly on this side. It has a circlip that holds the bearings in. So again, we're just going to knock the bearings out, make a drawing of the wheel. There you go. We'll see this a little bit more when we rebuild it. But that's basically the forks and wheels. Now I've just thought of something that I wanted to show you. So, let me get my tape measure. As I mentioned, this is two different models that it's built up from. The, the engine and some bits and pieces came from an Indian chief. This is the Trailblazer. Now when I was selling off some of the extra bits, I had a chap get in touch with me about front wheel for the Chief. He said he'd been looking for one for 15 years and I thought, well, that's funny, it's just Enfield. But it's not just Enfield. Let me move these slightly up there. That is the York that's come out of this trailblazer and it's a standard type Enfield York in which the fork tubes are we go from about centre to centre seven inches apart and here, we have the ones that came out of the Indian Chief. And here, the fork tubes are almost well, they're eight and a quarter inches apart. That's why he couldn't find the wheels, because they came with a wider hub. I didn't know that. So, all right, people, that's forks and wheels done. Um, if you have any questions about that, because I did seem, to, did seem to go through quite quickly, make a comment and we'll come back to it. So anyway, as I said before, enjoy yourselves. Hello, it's me again. I just thought you might be interested. I didn't show you them. These are the, the top yorks for those other Indian uh, Enfield forks. As you'll notice, completely different, including even the way the forks are, the uh, handlebars are on, because normally the clamp is underneath. Uh, the tops are slightly different. So, in fact, huh, you know, I'd never seen a pair of these, so I'm actually looking at them. I can see the inside of the fork is threaded, but I can't see that half-inch Allen. So maybe these aren't even threaded in. Maybe these are just uh, a straight knock-on. Who knows? I'll have to check that for you. Anyway. There you go, another little bit of useless information, or possibly for the Enfield people amongst you, something you might find interesting. So now you can go off and enjoy yourselves. <laughs>